this was on my channel last year this was at the show last year I don't know whether it's for sale or whether it's just an advertisement for the type of boat uh, looks like it's Camper and Nicholson so it looks like it's being used by Camper and Nicholson to show off what they can do so it's probably you know you can buy one like this but this is what I wanted to show you this is a brand new boat this is a Motier Excellence this is brand new uh, 80 meter and uh, this is Aberking and Rasmussen and it's just been delivered it well it was delivered in May the end of May so you can't get much newer than that the bow on this reminds me of uh, Motia A it's got the X bow kind of kind of looks a little bit like it this is this boat is not for sale as far as I can tell I think it's here as a as a Aberking and Rasmussen show of what they can do it's a 80 meter uh, it's got um, it can take 14 guests in seven cabins crew of 24 designer uh, the builder is uh, Aberking Rasmussen as I said the designers winch designs uh, maximum speed is 17 and a half knots it's got MTU engines the displacement is uh, well displacement that's interesting it's 2060 ton and um, cost is 120 million I say uh, uh, displacement is interesting because it's not normally something that's listed without gross tonnage. There is a difference. Uh, uh, I'll go into that at some point. But the gross tonnage is basically uh, is an old measurement uh, back from the days of uh, transporters transporting um, spirits in big barrels called tons, T-U-N-S, and um, the tax that they put on those ships was called the tonnage tax and they, so the vessel was basically measured in how many of these caskets it could carry hence tonnage so the tonnage would be uh, oh we're, we're taxing you this much for you know because your vessel holds a thousand tons caskets uh, displacement on the other hand is completely different if you displacement basically the easiest way to describe it is take a glass of water fill it right to the top take an object say let's say an orange put the orange in the glass and all the water that spills out onto the side that is the displacement that's how much volume of water it displaces and that's what displacement means basically when you place this boat in the water how much water does it displace and that's it so anyway if I turn around here boom <laughs> yachts everywhere this is why I love the Monaco Yacht Show We've got some uh, French police here, or Monegasque police, should I say. They're probably French, though. And, uh, whoa, close. <laughs> anyway, back to the back to the yacht. So we've got the uh, motor yacht Tis, T-I-S. I don't know whether it's Tis or Tis. Uh, built in 2019. This is brand new. This was built by Lurson. 111 meters. We've got the police doing some stuff here. Just wait, wait for them to get out of the way. There's the matching tender there, look. Very nice. Did I mention it was a Lurson? Lurson are bringing it, this Monaco Yacho. They're everywhere, the Lursons. Absolutely, 100% is the other guys who would build my yacht when I'm ready. I just haven't decided on a final design yet. <laughs> so as I said, 111 meters. Um, that's 360 feet, 365 feet. Um, beam of 16 meters. There's a guy behind me blowing up inflatable fenders, which is really annoying. Uh, maximum draft is 4.3 meters uh, and tonnage is four and a half thousand tons this vessel has won uh, best interior uh, of 2019 Monaco Yacht Show um, I've seen photographs of the interior I'll put some up on the screen um, not my not my style I, I would um, I would guess the owner is Russian because they go for this very sort of 19th century or early 20th century you know um, royal sort of palace kind of interior which I've never seen anyone else go for that kind of interior other than the Russian owners 
built in Rendsburg in Germany. Like I said, delivered 2019. Rendsburg is a nice place. I've been there myself. I've uh, been there on uh, on, on uh, in refits and on new builds. And uh, yeah, I like I like uh, I do like Germany. Yeah, it's very nice. But look at that up there. Look at the pool. So you got the pool, or maybe it's not a pool, but a jacuzzi of some sort. Uh, and then they just got that glass thing there, so you can look down. Oh, that's great. This is what the this is what it would be like when the owner comes on board so ordinarily when you see a boat in port like this they don't normally have all this gear out because they're not uh, expecting the owner so obviously it's all weather related so uh, once the boat once the owner leaves the boat all this stuff will be piled inside cushions removed it'll all be stacked covered in uh, with towels and stuff and then protected and then uh, you know left until the owner comes back but it's, it's great to see it because uh, we don't get to see this that often unless you're on unless you're invited on board so right right next to uh right next to tis is phoenix 2. um this is a 90 meter uh or 295 feet i guess who built this <laughs> lurson it's like the lurson corner of the monaco yacht show so it's got a 13.8 meter beam or 45 feet uh, and the draft is three, three point seven meters or twelve feet, and this is um, this is a charter yacht, so it's a uh, it's a big charter yacht. Uh, the cost to charter this per week in the summer is approximately one million euros or one million dollars, which is interesting. Um, in the Caribbean, you get a bonus bargain of it's just nine hundred and thirteen thousand euros uh, in the Caribbean for some reason. But yeah, so that's uh, that's what it's. So you imagine how much flying fox is going to cost set you back because uh, this is a this is a million euros, a clean million, uh, plus fuel plus everything else basically. Um, so yeah. Okay, this is an older boat, 2010. So I assume it's well, it's for charter, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's for sale because it's at the show. It could just be for charter. So we, again, up there on the top on the mast there, you've got your internet dome, which is very good. I like that. And uh, anyone guess the flag? Anyone? No? <laughs> it's Malta. It's a Maltese cross. You don't see that many big yachts flagged in Malta. So what's going on here? You can see this, they've got this boom right across the harbour entrance so basically today or for this for the purposes of the boat show you cannot come in and out freely so you have to have a ticket believe it or not and uh, the prices to get a ticket to come in if you're not uh, showing at the yacht show is about four thousand euros for the duration so yeah it was last year i haven't checked the price this year but i'm sure it's going to be about the same so you, so you can see the police there uh, are uh, in control and they're allowing people to come and go the, where well, they're checking everyone's IDs as they come in. Bellissimo. Look at this. If only I had the money. <laughs> That's about, I mean, all these Riviots here, just these three here, probably what, three million? Not to mention this one. They have a wall with water running down it. You can get that for free in any student accommodation. Yeah, so we are basically bringing these bottles to the visitors because we would like to avoid more plastic bottles. So uh -huh. this is a good way to reuse them and refill them, which you can okay. also do here. Okay. Yeah. And, with, and the water is 
The water is coming from Austria. Uh, it's uh, from a company called Heilstein. They gave it to us to promote it as well, and it's a nice thing. Okay. Water. So the water running down the wall is just for it's, effect. Yes, exactly. You're not actually drinking the water that's running down the wall. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, so this is Motor Yacht Dragon. Sorry about the noise, very noisy here. Motor Yacht Dragon. This is another new boat. Uh, it was launched in uh, 2019. Uh, 80 meters, just under 80 meters. And uh, it says the owner wanted a classic all white boat from the beginning. I'm not sure why he would want an all white boat because everybody's got white boats, but there you go. So this is a uh, Motor Yacht. Syzygy, I would imagine it's pronounced. It's got no vowels in it, so uh, a very strange name. But it's called Syzygy 818. Uh, no idea why it's called that. It's br this is brand new, and when I say brand new, I mean this was on its maiden voyage last week. So this is straight out of the shipyard. Sh quick trip to Gibraltar and then straight to Monaco. Registered in London as well, which is unusual. It's a, it's, it's a 78 meter. Yeah, it was called Project 818 in the shipyard. Apparently, the uh, the numbers 818 mean prosperous in Chinese numerologically, oh, which is interesting. The word Syzygy Man uh, is used in astrology to to reference a rare event in which three or more celestial bodies line up such as a new moon or lunar eclipse. All right, this is a uh, Motiart Secret. This is an 82 meter, or 271 feet, Aberking and Rasmussen. This is owned by a woman, unusually. Uh, Nancy Walton Laurie. That is not Hugh Laurie's wife. <laughs> She is known for, she made her money from Walmart. I think I mentioned it in another video not that long ago. So I'm not gonna say she owns Walmart because I have lots of people telling me that it was her husband that owns it and she wasn't exactly connected, I don't know. But anyway, uh, she made her money from Walmart, let's say it that way. All right, so you might recognize this boat. This was uh, in a video of mine recently. This was wrongly reported to be a gold-plated uh, super yacht, which is ridiculous. But this was uh, this was the, one of the pictures. In actual fact, the video that I w I'm referring to actually showed multiple yachts, and th and it was and it was saying that it was all the same yacht, even though they were clearly very different. Uh, and this was one of them, Kalila. And um, it's uh, 490 gross tons, uh, 48 meters long, 157 feet. And uh, it's actually, uh, top speed is 32 knots. Uh, and, it's, and it can cruise at 28 knots, which is fast for a super yacht. Uh, you know, most, most uh, owners are not interested in going that fast. They're more interested in luxury, which is understandable. In, in actual fact, most owners don't actually like moving on their yachts. They just like to sit on them, uh, a lagoon somewhere. Yacht Solo. It's a 72 meter, 
230 feet uh, from uh, Tankoa. Hmm, don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not familiar with this builder. This is for sale. Asking price 71 million 500,000. <laughs> Crazy. He says it's the most efficient yacht. It won. It's, it won the trophy for most efficient yacht from the World Yachts Trophies 2018. Alright guys, so uh, what do we take from today? Um, a lot of big boats in, a lot of more high profile boats than I've ever seen. Um, Flying Fox, Octopus, uh, it's, the, I, I, it's the biggest disappointment for me really that I didn't get to see it up close. I've seen that boat everywhere um, over the years. In actual fact, Octopus is the reason I got into this yachting industry because when I was on the cruise ships, um, I kept bumping into Octopus. I saw it in New York, I saw it in New Orleans, and I, I saw it in, um, in Bermuda. I kept seeing this boat and I kept thinking, uh, it sounds crazy, but I kept thinking, I, I'm gonna work on that boat someday. I don't know why I had this thing in my head. I never did, unfortunately, not so far. I, um, but um, I almost did. I had interviews to go there uh, a few years ago, about five years ago. And, um, and then unfortunately they hired somebody who had already worked there before, who, who applied after I had applied. So I actually got invited to go to the boat in the south of France and before I, I was able to arrange that, they, they then said, oh, I'm sorry, but the job's no longer available. So I almost got there, but it got me into this industry. And every time I see it, I think about that and I think about whether I would have been in the industry had it not been for Octopus. So. It's great to be able to see it. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that I wasn't able to see it like I can see these boats behind me. So that, so that takes me to the highlight. What was the highlight? Obviously the highlight of the trip uh, or, or of, the, of the day is, um, is going on to uh, Moti Yacht Bold. Uh, great, uh, the, um, the chap who showed me around, unfortunately I forgot to get his name, but um, he was the guy who actually installed uh, the AV equipment on board so it was really great to be able to talk to him and to have uh, to be shown around I got my own personal tour which was fantastic if you haven't seen that video make sure to go and uh, link uh, make sure to click on the link and go and watch it it'll be great it's a really, uh, really I had a really fun time on that boat um, so that was the highlight for me um, Amadea is a beautiful boat I, I've, I've put footage on just recently just from a just from a uh, maybe a month ago so check that out if you haven't seen it I'll put a link in as well in the top of the screen in the corner and maybe I'll put one down in the bottom as well all right so guys I'm gonna wind her up here because uh, it's time to go and I have to head for a train and go back to Italy so I hope you enjoyed this I know it's not as much I couldn't do as much to, uh, on the on this trip that, as I did in previous years so unfortunately I, I only had one day here so um, but hopefully next year I'll be, it'll be back to normal and I'll be here for the full four days and also try and get on more boats as well so uh, if you liked it give it a thumbs up let me know what you thought the your favorite boat of the show was and uh, let's discuss it in the comments all right guys oh one more thing uh, thanks to Marco for emailing me he emailed me he's, a, he's a, a fan of the channel and he emailed me and told me that bold was actually taken uh, you were able to uh, apply to go on board for a look around and i didn't know about that and he uh, he sent me the link and um so i was able to uh, get on board and have a look around so thanks very much marco uh, i really appreciate that and i hope you enjoyed the video all right guys take it easy and i'll see you next time <laughs>